Hello everyone and welcome to what's going to be a very interesting uh, unboxing and today we have here the new Angue X24 and yes you are hearing that right it's not the X26 it's the X24 uh, it's a newer model that has smaller wheels the overall specifications are similar it has triple suspension system dual battery system it has full hydraulic brakes it has very strong and high torque rear hub motor and this should be a very interesting bike and today we are going to unpack it install it and prepare it for the full review so let's take a quick look now so i brought my tools for unpacking and for unpacking i'm going to use a zip tie cutter don't worry i'm going to gather all of that i'm not going to leave any kind of dirt here but there are a lot of things to unpack and the front wheel will come like this separated from the rest of the bike while the bike will come really well protected in a lot of extra foam and padding so i'm going to clip it all off and we are going to check it out and we can actually unfold the frame right now and that should be easier for us to continue with the setup of the bike and the bike should stay in equilibrium something like this also please take note that the sound may be slightly distorted because I've chosen to do this outdoor because this bike is really huge and actually really heavy uh, the package the package not the bike has 50 kilograms so the box the cardboard box with all the packaging the accessories the charger and whatever you get extra with the battery with the bike such as the batteries pre-installed uh, seats and everything and the packaging again which is uh, very complex on this bike and uh, it uses very uh, strong cardboard so all of that weighs uh, almost 50 kilograms so it was really hard to actually carry and deliver this bike and uh, unpacking it and installing it is also proving a bit of challenge because this when it's fully installed it's rather big it's a big bike it's not a bike that you are going to carry downstairs by yourself because you are not going to be able to do that so i'm telling you the truth right now so let's continue with the amp packing and that's why the sound may be a bit weird because although i'm using dedicated microphone you might pick up some other noises and probably here it's the kickstand yes this is the kickstand here so be sure you don't throw it away when you are unpacking it i highly recommend you getting this type of clippers because they are very efficient in cutting zip ties and not scratching the paint when you are using a scissor or a cutter or a knife you risk damaging the paint work so also the headlamp here right so we are getting close to fully unwrapping the bike okay and this one here zip tie and foam i'm going to leave the front one because it's keeping the bike stable and now the more interesting uh, stuff happens so for instance the tail lamp no longer comes uh, fixed because uh, it can be damaged during transport because the oversized packaging and weight so all things that are poking in the box are somehow 
taken off the bike and uh, inserted into foam and wrapped under the frame so they are protected during transport you don't get the rear seat installed you don't get get the normal seat installed you don't get the tail lamp installed you don't get the front light installed so a lot of accessories are not fixed on the bike uh, that is to give them protection during transport including the kickstand because the kickstand can poke here the box and the box can be pushed and damaged and all the pressure will hit the kickstand the hit kickstand will hit the bike so more damage can incur so everything was taken out just to protect the contents of the box to further continue with our setup we are going to look into the main box where we are going to find an updated manual and i'm going calling this updated because angwe has changed the way it makes manuals it actually no longer uses uh, generic manuals it uses proper manuals and they have details for each exactly model that you are actually unpacking so this will help you a lot more so beside the updated manual x24 manual here we get the pedals and we get two sets of keys and you are going to see why we have two sets of keys we get the general toolbox that we get and an updated charger the updated charger has three amps so more power to quickly charge your batteries because now you have this battery the tube battery and the frame battery uh, the tube battery is the larger one and the tube the frame battery is the smaller one uh, you only get one charger so you have to charge them one by one it would be nice to have an offer on angue to actually get two chargers so you can charge both of them at the same time so we are going to fix the tail lamp this is very easy we have two screws here they have nine locks but we have the included spanner here so we are going to untwist this and we have also take care we have a washer here so we do not lose the washer and then we have the other nylock with the washer here and this is going to go through the holder specially designed for it and the holder has here an indent that's for the cable so the cable goes through the indent and then the lamp tail lamp will go in its place and we are going to put first the washer and after the washer we are going to put the nylock and then we are going to use the spanner to secure them into position now let's take a look at the seat install so we have here a screw underneath and we have this system here and the main seat the rider seat is in this box here pretty well protected I'm going to try to take it out right don't worry about the packaging I'm going to take all of that I'm not going to leave it here all right so the seat it's rather a standard angle seat nothing uh, different about it and this this is not complicated to install but not simple either because we have this screw here that's going to be taken out the screw goes downward I'm using its, its head here to take it out but this unscrews from under the battery so I think that I'm going to actually take the battery out if I manage to take it out yes that's the battery and look at that battery this thing is huge I don't know how to put this hole into the camera all right and now you can see the mechanism better here so we have this screw here that goes through this part here so we are taking the screw out and between these two clamps here we are going to fix the rails on the seat just like that so when you unscrew this you should get this so you leave the screw here you have this adjusting plate here that's going to adjust the saddle position and then you are going to put the saddle back i'm going to help myself putting this back because this thing is too heavy to keep it with just one hand all right sorry about the camera shake this is much better so this adjusts the seat incline this will go over here and now with this clamp i'm going to fix it over the rails of the seat and then i'm going to put this on top 
and then I'm going to use the provided hex key from underneath the battery from here so I can tighten the whole assembly you can use your hand at the beginning it's going to be sufficient to hold everything in place and after that you are going to use the provided hex key to finish this off so it has cached the nut and now I can move on to the hex key to secure it uh, you might not see a lot of on the camera because the position is weird so this should be better for you to understand the system so we have the bolt here the screw that goes through this seat and we have the first part here that allows us to adjust the angle and we have the top clip and somewhere over the top clip here that's there's the nut that holds the whole assembly and now with the hex key we can start to actually secure the whole system and we have this indents here where the rail of the seat is going to hold out so now it's in position and we can secure it that way so the seat is now installed so we can move to the handlebar that's also easy to install we are going to say easy you get it the seat you have seen not very complicated but not easy either so to install the handlebar you just have to untighten these four screws here and then we are going to fix the handlebar in this uh, holding part I'm going to take them out some of them are really tight but after you untighten them they are going to get out very easy take care when you are taking them out they also have a washer so don't lose the washer because it's important okay two out two more to go and last but not least the fourth one still holding in all right and now we can put the handlebar the handlebar is now unpacked and it sits here so we can replace this put it back careful not to cross thread the screws this bike uses a lot of aluminium alloy it's aircraft grade aluminium alloy but uh, aluminium uh, although this uh, um, aircraft grade aluminium um, although it's light and resistant it's not happy to cross threading so take care with that don't use the force be sure that you properly seat the screws before tighten them up otherwise you are going to end up cross threading them destroying thread and destroying the build so don't do that also i noticed that a really nice thing here the handlebar it's a raised handlebar so this should give a lot more comfort than a regular handlebar so now we all have to do is to tighten up the screws to the maximum and with the handlebar installed we can move on to the kickstand that's also easy to install we need to find the appropriate hex key uh, Engwe did take care to provide us with all the needed keys to make this installment possible so let's install the kickstand that's also easy to do first we need to take out the screws that are included here also again these have extra washers onto them so be sure when you take them off not to lose the washers washers are actually important because they have several rows here they prevent the screws from getting off uh, and besides uh, preventing them from getting off they also allow you to better tighten the screws uh, there are a lot of things about that but maybe you should actually 
check some other references not me about the metallurgy of using washers so the kickstand will go underneath this welded support here again careful not to cross thread them they need to get in easy just by using your hand not the key so if they don't go in easy you are doing something wrong you just need to get them into the right position so after you get the thread on then you can continue with using the key to completely install them and also of course to tighten them up so you don't lose them right so the kickstand is ins also installed now but i'm going to fold it right and all we have to do now is to put the front wheel that's going to be a bit more tricky the front wheel and the front hand lamp we still have the front lamp not installed so let's do that now that's easy to do we have this screw here pre-installed we need to take them off this is very tightened up so i'm going to release it but it has a nylock so the nylock will spin and i need to use some counter force to keep it steady so let's see will some of the angle provided spanners will fit so i'm going to use this spanner here underneath and let's see if this is enough so in not an eight it's probably a ten does it work i think it's working yes it's working this is getting off that's very good so we need to take this off completely that's good all right and now we are going to put the headlamp in the position going to put the screw and the washer and then on the rear we're going to put the nylock again we are going to hold the nylock with the spanner in case you are wondering what's a nylock nylock it's a nut regular nut but it has a plastic insert that makes it very hard to twist or untwist and that keeps that nut from not getting off by itself so from the vibrations it's not going to loosen up that usually happens when you have a regular nut uh, sometimes in uh, very complicated things you use two nuts a counter nut that's locking the front the first nut but that's not so efficient like using a nylock so nylock it's a nylon locking nut it uses nylon plastic which is constricting the screw and keeping it from turning so it will prevent it from getting loose from the vibrations that you are experiencing while you are riding the bike so the headlamp is almost installed as you can see i'm rotating it because i'm making more space so i can use the hex key faster to secure this and that's it it's in position it's installed and it's tight right so now we have to install the front wheel to make things easier i'm going to actually put the bike on a side because this is very heavy and i'm not going to be able to keep it up to put the wheel as it should and i'm going to do something like this i'm going to take this i'm also going to put this foam underneath so it holds the bike in position that way and now we need to take this off this is a protection for the fork during transport so it doesn't hit and bend again we are going to use provided keys by angle and one of them should fit here 
so we should be able to take this off and this one fits wow and this is very tight going tight from this side ah, managed to do it all right and from this side here I also need to put the bike back into the position Okay. All right, and we have this counter nuts here. This is easier if you press this way, so you take them in. All right, and we can take the protection shaft out. I'm going to reset this into the position that I want it to be. Something like this, maybe put this under the frame. No, still under the front fork is better. Here so it sits in kind of a balance and the front wheel there's not much to talk about the front wheel it has some protections that we need to take off this one for instance and it has a similar one on the other side and they did something here so they pre-installed the shaft and the washers and everything else so we have this screw here we don't actually need to take it off completely and we have a washer and a locking washer the locking washer will go in this part here and it will lock in this space so the shaft will not rotate with the wheel so we are going just to loosen them up on both sides and we are going to put the wheel the wheel is not going to enter easy because the disc will not going to get in in the caliper because the caliper has this protection so take this from the caliper first and now we should be able to install this so the brake disc will go through the caliper and we need to lift I'm going to untwist on this more same on the other side a lot more actually but you don't need to fully take them off and now I'm going also to raise these and also be sure that the lower ones are in the correct position they are almost in the correct position Okay. and I'm going to push the wheel up this is in and now I'm going to tighten them up from both sides be sure that the locking washers indent matches the front fork opening so they don't untwist and rotate so I'm holding this up and going to move it a bit and now it's fully inserted so I'm going to slowly tighten them up from both sides so I'm sure that they are in the correct position fully inserted right so the front wheel is installed but maybe we are going to need to adjust the front caliper a bit just a bit so it's not touching any size of the disc this one touches it slightly but if you put push the brake a few times it might just settle into correct position so i need to ride this a bit first and then adjust the caliper right so it's not over we have one more thing left to do we have to install the pedals for the pedals you know the procedure poke them take them out of the plastic bag and we again have the well-go full metallic pedals that are not folding and they are labeled L and R and of course they are also labeled on the bike so the L1 it shows us how to properly install it 
and again I highly recommend you to check this out and they should go in easy by hand if they don't go easy you are cross threading and them and you are destroying them so that's one pedal installed and it goes the same for the other one the other one has reversed thread so just follow the arrow that's on the pedal and you are good with that last but not least we are going to connect the main battery and that's with this flex cable i'm going to tell you that this bike uses a fusion battery combiner circuitry that's a device that uses uh, so-called ideal diodes it puts two batteries in parallel the one that has more charge is getting discharged firstly and then uh, they both work together out and they are going to match and share the load so the seat battery with the frame battery are going to work together and they are going to provide some awesome range oh and i did forgot something and that's the rear seat because this bike has two seats almost forgot about that because that was hidden in some packaging here that was looking like the stuff that i was throwing out and here is the seat and the seat has these nylock parts and it should go in something like this and it should just slide in just like that but doesn't seem to be just like that so i'm going to yep i'm having a problem excuse me but instructions were wrong we have this locking screw so we don't get this off sorry so we have the angle provided screwdriver so we actually need to take this screw out first oh and this is getting very heavy to take out i'm using uh, i need something else a much bigger screwdriver because this is not getting out that easy but the idea with this screw is that you have this hole here so on this main holes here this we are going to slide in but with this one you are going to use one of these holes here to lock this so this goes in and it's not going to slide out because it's held in place by this screw but you need to take this off put this on and then put the screw from underneath so it holds it in place but i cannot take it off i'm going to use a larger screwdriver to take this off and then put it as it should and now i'm going to power on the seat battery the other battery is connected when you unfold the bike so let's power this on and there we go we have power we have the latest all in display the one that you also get on the updated engine pro with lots of options five working assist modes we get normal we get sport we get echo so let's see if this works uh, does it have throttle installed throttle is a push button here uh, but probably we also need to select here um, working mode so let's see now yes it works so so speed is actually rather low but i need to check if the bike is fully unlocked and check the whole settings if this is ready to fully run this has a not really a secret menu but has a lot of things here that you can adjust you can adjust the power setting for each mode and you have a lot of other things here so let's see speed limit it's there is no speed limit it's 63 kilometers per hour that should be good so I'm going to fully charge the battery and prepare this for the real review so that was it for now that was the unboxing and initial install or setup of the new angue x24 
be sure to follow my next uploads and you are going to see this bike in action. Until then, see you and bye bye.